bless the Lord. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We give God thanks for today. I'm going to invite you to stand with me. We're going to pray together as we begin our day's worship. If we can stand together at this time. We ask that the presence of the Lord be with us today as we spend this time in his presence together. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let's pray together at this time. Let us pray. Amen. Bless the Lord. We have come into his house. We have gathered in his name to worship him. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm hoping you're going to follow along with me today. Unfortunately, I don't believe we have our normal visual, but I pray that you will be a part of today's worship nonetheless. Amen. Let's worship Christ the Lord. Yeah. 
Of our praise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Hallelujah. of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King Rise among us, let it rise. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King, let them rise among us. Let it rise. Glory of the Lord, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, sing it go. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh,
clap your hands this morning. Let the song, let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the song of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Hallelujah, the highest praise unto you. Amen. Bless his wonderful name. Hallelujah. In the moment, I'm going to invite Deacon uh, Wright, if you could raise today's tithes and offering for us. We're going to sing unto the Lord a new song. We're going to bless him, praise him, and lift him higher simply because he is worthy. Amen. Generations dance and celebrate. Sing, sing unto the Lord and do some 
Bless him, praise him, lift him higher. All the chosen generations that sing unto the Lord and do song. Sing unto the Lord and do song. Bless him, praise him, lift him higher. All the chosen generations that dance and celebrate. Sing unto the Lord and do song. Bless him, praise him, lift him higher. All the chosen generations that dance and celebrate. Why is it this game? Is it this game? pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure for use it will be measured to you this morning what we're going to do is give what we can and we know God is going to replenish what we've given at this time I'm just, just bow your heads as I pray at this time Lord Jesus, most righteous and gracious ever, Father, we thank and praise the Lord God for thy loving care and kindness extend towards this time, Lord God. Lord God, I pray for those who have to give today, Lord Jesus, Lord God, that thou may allow them to give what they can, Lord God, and feel comfortable giving what they can, Lord God. We pray and ask, Lord God, even at this time, Lord God, where um, circumstances around us, their utilities are increasing, Lord God, the cost of food are increasing, Lord God, and the 
crowned what was worth a lot more. Lord God, and was able to stretch a lot more. Um, was able to stretch and do what we can but Lord God I know that through everything Lord Jesus Lord God as we give today Lord God may we give um, according to how that is allowed and placed in our mind to give Lord Jesus we give you praise Lord God we give you glory Lord God for everything that thou has allowed us to um, do Lord God Lord God I know Lord God that it's time um, Thou has blessed us, Lord God, in order to um, have what food we've had um, today, Lord Jesus, Lord God. Closing our backs, Lord Jesus, Lord God. Shoes our feet, Lord God. Whatever, Lord God. Heating our homes, Lord God. Um, whatever, Lord God, thou has blessed us and kept us, Lord God. We pray that thou may be with us, Lord God, as we give what we can, Lord God, according to what thou has allowed us to do, Lord Jesus. We give you praise, Lord God. And I pray that those who stand their way come in, Lord Jesus, Lord God, and may still have to give, Lord God, whether they be pulling into the car park across the road or trying to find the car parking space, Lord Jesus, or on the bus, Lord Jesus, whatever may be, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, even as they still come in service a bit later, Lord God, that thou will purpose in the heart what they have to give, Lord God, as a sacrifice of offering, Lord Jesus. We give you thanks and we give you prayers at this time as we agree in your name. Jesus, amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Thank you, Deacon Wright. Are we ready to worship in giving? Amen. The songwriter says, who has the final say? We know Jehovah God. Hallelujah. He has the final say. Amen. Amen. All right. Has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Around Jehovah turn my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Oh, Jehovah, Jehovah turn, Jehovah turn my life around. Jehovah turn my life around. Why he makes where there is Jehovah is. Tell me who has. The final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say.
final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say.
It's in your hands. Hallelujah. Whatever it is today, it's in his hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He has the final say. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you have the final say today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever the situation is this morning, Jehovah God has the final say. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We believe, Lord. We lift up our faith today in you. You have the final say. You and you alone have the final say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. By faith, we thank you in advance. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for a moment. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is today within me, I just bless His holy name. Because truly He is good, He is wonderful, He is mighty, He is worthy. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. I have but one birthday card in front of me. I was like, oh, it's the first time I'm seeing just the one. But it looks like it's a special birthday as well. Sister Johnson, I believe it is your birthday on Tuesday. We're going to wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh, birthday to you and many returns we pray in jesus name amen amen we're about to move into a time of worship before we hear the word today and i'm going to be inviting sister winnie in a moment if you could pray for the speaker uh, for me which will be our deacon glenford russell today amen amen hosanna in the highest let our king be lifted up hosanna we bless his name today Awesome God, we worship you and you alone today. I invite you to stand as we spend this time and worship.
That I can't be lifted up. I can't be lifted up. Oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh, Hosanna, oh,
as Lord over every one of our circumstances. We just can't stop from praising him because he's with us. Hallelujah. Because he's with us. Because, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, because he's with us, he can raise the standard above everything that we are going through right now. And so as we prepare our hearts, hallelujah, prepare our hearts for the word, hallelujah, we take the time to praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God. You are with us, Lord. You are with us, oh God, through the sickness, through the pain, through the hurts, through the rejection. God, you are with us. Hallelujah, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Those who know what I'm talking about, you know how to praise him. You know how to lift him up because you are here and because he's with us. I take and make no apologies for praising God because when he's in the house, we need to give him praise. And so as we prepare our hearts for the word that is to come, I want you to bow your heads as we pray over the man of God. That God, your perfect will will be done in your servant right now. Father, we pray over our deacon, Glenn Russell, as he would come right now and he would share the word with your people. Father, we are praying for a sound and a clear word that will come forth, that will transform, that will make new, Father, that will change the atmosphere in this place, Father that will draw us closer to you right now. Father, every distraction in this house right now that would come to steal, to kill and destroy. Father, we command in the name of Jesus that those doors are closed today. We take the authority of God and we stand on the word and we say, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come right now by the power of your Holy Ghost. We anoint him, Father, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. That he will speak, thus saith the Lord right now. And that every, oh God, word that would come from the enemy, we shut those doors today. And we say that victory is his in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Right now, we pray that we will have ears to listen, ears to receive right now. That God, as your servant speaks, we will know it come from you right now. And for those that are listening online, those that are on their way, Father, we pray that you will hasten their footsteps, that the word will go forth, it will conquer, and it will bring fresh uh, a revival to those who hear it uh, as we give you thanks right now in no other name, but in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, your servant, Deacon Russell. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bless the Lord. As just before Deacon Russell comes, a song of us requested, the great I am. I want to be close, close to your side so that heaven is real and death is no more than alive. We're going to share in this as he then comes to share with us what God has laid on his heart. Amen. want to be close, close to your side.
So heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above singing God's one, singing hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, there is none beside thee. God Almighty, the great I am. Verse 2. Said I want to be near, just be near to your heart. Loving the world and hating the dark. Yes, I want to see dry bones living again, singing as one, singing hallelujah, singing holy, 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 God Almighty, you are the great.
Hallelujah. Can you hear me, church? We go down. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you are the great I am. If you know he's the great I am, give him a praise. I just want to say thank you, worship team. Thank you for leading us to the throne of grace. Thank you. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. So they let me out to do it once more. <laughs> I hope that's all right. I can only give the word how I give the word. Is that all right today? And I have an illustration, like always. I'll try not to weary your patience, but at the same time, I'm really nervous. And don't I always say that? I always say that, don't I? I'm always nervous. Today is different. Today is different. Today is different because I got this word the week mum passed away. And it was a difficult word to hear. And I kept on thinking, why am I, why am I writing? I'm not preaching. Why, am, why is this coming to me? And the more and more after mum's passing, I was like, okay, Lord. I see what's going on in the world. And things started on in you, started to come to light, which you're going to hear about this morning. Now, before I start, this is my disclaimer. Everything I say today, I'm talking about me just as much as we're talking about the body of Christ. Is that all right? So I'm not throwing no stones. I don't want no one to come to me afterwards and start saying, it's you, you, you're higher than anyone. Not at all. I'm talking about me. Is that all right, church? Today's topic is, title is called, Don't Look Back. Don't look back. Straight away, if you know a little bit of Bible, you should kind of understand where I'm going. You should kind of get it. The picture tells the story. But today's a little bit different. It's a 21st century version. Don't look back. When we think of a story of Lot's wife, Lord, I'm asking you to use me. One more time, Lord. When we think of Lot's wife, we instantly think of the outcome of her unfortunate end. However, the story of Lot's wife serves more than just a warning. There's more to the story than just a pillar of salt. Church, I'm going to need you to preach with me today. Is that all right? You see, her tragic end is a combination of disobedience and bad decisions made just not by her, but by her husband, Lot, and his family. This word today is a reminder that God is a God of second chances. He is a merciful God and a loving God. But when God speaks to us directly, we need to heed his words. How many times has God spoken to us and we've been slow to react? How many times has God said, you know what, Glenn, Sharon, Mark, John, Paul, come. I've got a work for you to do. And we're like, boy, that's not really what I want to do. We're slow on the reaction. The story of Lot's wife, the story of Lot's wife is a story of a family living in a sinful town called Sodom. Lot, the nephew of Abraham, moved to Sodom after an altercation with his helpers, disagreeing on where to set up camp. You see, Abraham amassed a great wealth and following. And Lot had great wealth too. Unfortunately, the land that they occupied was too small for both of them to live. So Abraham said, we're family. If you go east, I'll go west. So Lot and his family looked out to set up camp on the outskirts of Sodom. So he saw how Sodom looked and he was like, yeah, this will be the place. So from go, the decision to move to such a sinful place was Lot's undoing. When Abraham learned of God's plan to destroy the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, he asked God to spare them. 
You know like when we're talking to God, you know like when, can I keep it real like I always do? You know when you're in trouble, right? I know, when I was younger. Lord, if you could just get me through this one more time, I promise, I promise, Lord. Do you understand? The prayer, the, you know, the, that kind of prayer. The, those baby prayers when you're trying to get yourself out of something. And God knows your heart. Lord, I promise I won't pick that up again if you just get me through. Abraham knew that God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham tried to, not barter, but plead, intercede. Lord, I know you're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But if there's 50, if there's 50 people, Lord, I beg you, spare them. How can we barter with God? But he's trying. 50. Technically, out of two cities, when you think about it, two towns. How can you have less than 50 God-fearing people in a whole town? Come on, people. That can tell you how bad it is. But Abraham thought to himself, he goes, Lord, Lord. What about 40? Okay, okay. And he knew how bad Sodom was. No, Lord, I tell you what, I'm going to cut to the chase. Not 30, not 20, 10. 10 people in a whole city. Come on, church. And God said, I tell you what, Genesis 18, 32. For the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. For 10 people in a whole town, Abraham asking for mercy to save Lot and his family and God agreeing to lessen the number to 10 shows you how bad the city was. The Bible story of Sodom and Gomorrah is a cautionary tale of the destructive consequences of sin. Sodom and Gomorrah cities in Genesis was notorious for their flagrant sin. The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah was so great and so grievous that God said, I will go down and see what they have done as bad as the outcry has reached me. That is Genesis 18, verse 20 to 21. After Abraham leaving, God's angels arrived at the gates of Sodom, where the gatekeeper Lot greeted them. He pleaded with the angels and said to them, come to my house, please. Okay, he could tell they were different. Please, let me make you a dinner. Let me make you a meal. Let me give you a drink. You know, look when you take somebody in. Hello, church. So the angels agreed. Lot was warned by the two angels that the town of Sodom was going to be destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed. He greeted them and said, please stay the night before they went on their way. They agreed and told Lot of the impending judgment and that what was to befall the city is what God had commanded. There was so much to this story. I wrote this and I was like, whoa. There's so much to this story. It's difficult to just focus on one thing. You can talk about the sheer nastiness on how Sodom and Gomorrah was. The sheer blatancy how the people did stay. Because I'm going to be honest with you. They was nasty. Sorry, let me say it. They were disgusting. (laughs) Their living ways was horrible. Horrible. You can talk about their sheer lack of moral compass that Lot had. Lot was willing to give over his own own daughter to quell the crowd, which we're going to get to now. So what I'm trying to show you is, is that when you're in a place of sin, after a while, you just kind of like, you know what, it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. You compromise, don't you? You compromise. The baying crowd was banging at the door. So what happens is, the two angels come and they stay. And the crowd was like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Enough man, plenty man come, trying to bang on the door. Do, 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 let us in, let us in. We want those two men we want. We want to have our way with them. We want to have our way with them because there's children in the room. I can't even say it how I want to say it. But do you understand what I'm saying, church? Yeah? So we're not talking like a little a little group now, holy per people, start banging on the door. We want to forcibly have our way with your guests. So Lot turns around and says, well, no, 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 no. Please, please, don't do that, don't do that. Supposed to be moral compassly right. Remember what I'm saying about Lot now. No, 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 don't do that. Here, take my virgin daughters instead. 
please, because in the old days, when you have the shelter of somebody who's coming into the house, you protect them. So Lot was saying, here, take my daughters instead. But no, the men wanted the men. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. Now, I'm a, I'm a parent. There's no way I'm giving up my daughter, Sophia. No. You understand what I'm trying to say? There is no way. But Lot's mind and his look and his outlook to try and step and say no was in the wrong place. You know what the angels ended up doing? No. no. And blinded all the men outside. You see how God works? See, when we're not on the job and we're not dealing with what we're supposed to be dealing with, God steps in. God stepped in and said, no, enough. All of the men, oh, I can't see. The Bible actually says they couldn't even find the door handle to where the house was. God blinded those men. Hmm. The angels gave the warning again, leave this place. Yet Lot and his family was on the go slow. They already went through it the night before. Trying to make a deal with the angels, say, well, in the morning, I tell you what, should we just go down to the town of a near town? Because we're old, we can't make it up to the mountains. God is trying to save your life and we're still bartering, trying not to leave what we're coming from. And you understand what I'm trying to say, church? This is a hard word today. I've got to give it straight, no chaser. This is how it is. They had a chance to leave, to run and go. And they were like, Boy. You know what, should we just go to the near town because it's just nearby? And the angel's saying, run and don't look. I'm going to need you to help me with that later on. So the angel said, do you have anyone else of you? Son-in-laws or daughters, anyone else in the city? Get them out before we are going to destroy this place. The outcry of the Lord is against its people, so great that he has sent us to destroy it. How many times do we hear a word that touches our very heart? How many times do we feel convicted in the spirit and we don't do anything about it? I'm keeping it 100 with you. How many times have you heard pastor or a speaker or you watch a video and it could be somebody and it convicts your heart? Mainly I'm going to talk about when we're in church. I know, I'm going to tell you from the beginning, I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about me today. You guys are along for the ride. I'm sat in that booth over there and I'm hearing it and I'm convicted to get up and come to the altar and I'm sitting down there. And I'm like, get yourself up. Get up and go and get prayer. When you're convicted, you know. You know that that word is for you. Am I making sense to you, church? How many times? 1 Corinthians 10. Paul wars against setting one's heart on evil things such as idolatry, immorality, testing the Lord. And here's something that I never really thought of about. Grumbling. You know our people, we like to moan, innit? We like to moan about everything. He says that these things happened in Israel in times and he was written down to warn us. Here's one which is really pertinent to what we're talking about here. Deuteronomy 8, 10 to 4 warns that wealth can lead to pride and forgetting the Lord. City of Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because the people's a prideful people. They forgot who God was. They had no moral compass. They will do any and everything. Everything. Ezekiel 3, 18 and 19 warns that if you don't speak about, if you don't warn the people about the wickedness that's going on, then their sin should be on you. How merciful is our God really? So let me get this straight. God himself comes down to the town of Willanor. He comes down to the town of Bilston, or wherever you've come from today. And he said to you directly, you need to fix up, because this place is going to get destroyed. What would you do? I'm just paraphrasing. What would you do? Would you really try to turn and fix up yourself? Or would we take it like, nah, I didn't really hear from him. Was that God or was that me talking? Do you understand how we try to kind of rationalize things out? I'm telling you today, don't look back. We are living in a world where celebrities and fame, here it comes now, because I'm, I'm here to upset some people. God has laid this on my heart. We are here in a world where celebrities and fame have come as a replacement for Sodom and Gomorrah. I told you I need you to preach with me today. Man has replaced themselves, as the word says. Man will be lovers of what? Themselves. 
Look at today's society. You have a generation growing up seeing that it's normal to like be perfect. You look on the TikTok, the Instagram, the Facebook, all of them, and everything has to look a certain way. You can't be normal anymore. You can't have cellulite anymore. You can't be overweight. You, you understand where I'm coming from, church? Amen. This generation, there are times that are shown at an increasing a higher rate through to social media that people are suffering with mental health because they're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Am I talking to somebody? If I look good and I'm wearing an outfit, yo, you watch me, I'm going to bust that. I'm going to wear it better than you. I'm going to... Oh, come on, church. It's the really some real talk. It's the really some real talk. We have become lovers of ourselves instead of praising God and living for God. Everything is about how good I am now. How peak I look. Is it peak? Is it tired? Is that the right phrase? All right. I'm trying to keep up my mule. <laughs> We are bombarded with imagery of perfectness and we marginalise people with wholesome, normal behaviour. It's all coming out. These celebrities give off the illusion that their life is grand. And I ain't gonna lie, even younger, I'd be like, yo, man, I want that. I want the Lex Coots, the Beamers and the Benz. I want all of that stuff. I want the trappings of wealth. I want to be comfortable for my family. Who doesn't? I said I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about you, but I'm talking about you too. Who doesn't want to be comfortable? that you don't have to wonder you're going to turn on the heating because the house is too cold and you ain't got money to pay it. Oh, I'm talking to someone today. You want to be comfortable, don't you? There's nothing wrong with that. But there's something wrong when we idolise these people, these Beyonce's, these Jay-Z's, these Puffies, because you know what's happening now? What shall be done in the dark will come out in the... Oh, come on, church. What's happening on the news now? Famous people getting arrested. What for? I'm going to say it straight, man. Khaki ears. For having freak off. Having a room where people come in and do exactly what was happening in Saddam and Gomorrah. But we normalise it like it's okay. What do we call it? We're going to call it the white party. Everybody dressing white. Everybody looking good. Drinks and sex and more drinks and more sex. And more carrying on only to find out that they're being recorded and blackmailed for it. I'm trying to give you a word that's a 21st century word right now because that's what's going on in, what, in the world right now. But we idolise these people, yeah? This generation is all about the peas. Do you know what the peas is? Do you know what the peas is? You're smiling at me, innit? It's all about that. It's all about that and less about God. It's all about self-promotion and less about God. Where's God in your life? But we're talking about how great I am. 2 Timothy 3, the dangers of the last days. You should know this, Paul said, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there'll be very difficult times for the peoples who love themselves and their money They'll be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They'll consider nothing sacred. They'll be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They'll be cruel and hate what is good. They'll betray their friends and be reckless. And here it comes, puffed up with pride. They'll be a lover of pleasure rather than God. Does that sound like what the world that we're living in today, isn't it? It don't sound no different to me. 2,000 year old Bible, Bible talking about what's happening right now. Come on, church. For Paul spoke about something. Paul describes the nature in the last days. He warned that the, it characterizes, characterizes a form of godliness, but denying power. He said, be careful of people. Sorry, I keep walking around. I feel like I'm going to kick it. Paul's speaking about a way how people may seem, here it comes, they may seem godly on the outside. Lots. They seem godly on the outside. They know how to use the speech. They know how to talk the talk. They know how to walk the walk. They know how to praise God. But they're shallow as a puddle in the rain. They are shallow. 
Be careful of those people. Those who have a form of godliness, who make an outward display of religion, they present themselves as godly for all that they show, but there's no power behind their religion. The evidence in the fact that their lives are left unchanged. They speak of God, but live in sin. Sound like lots, doesn't it? Holy person knows what God has done. Nephew to Abraham knows how far God has brought him. But it's like, I don't really want to leave Sodom, you know. I don't really want to. Do we have to? So if you know around the Midlands here now and you're from Wolverhampton, can we just go to Dudley? It's, it's not that far, is it? That's what he's trying to say. He don't really want to go far enough, but far enough that he doesn't get the impending doom. Am I making sense to someone today? Why am I saying this? People are comfortable in doing whatever they want to do. Saying that sounds right and holy and their actions are so contrary to what God wants. It's just for, let me write it, let me read it how I wrote it. It's just for sure we have to mindful of that. That we come to church and we're playing church saying, oh, I'm praising you, Lord. Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm doing my own thing. And then in church, I give the impression that I'm saved. I give the impression that, pray for me, my brother. Pray, come, let me pray for you, my sister. And my life is just as dirty, if not worse than yours. We need to see that this world is not our world. I'm going to say something that isn't in there because I really want it to hit home. Now, I'm sorry if this, I'm just going to say it as it is. You know, like when you see the young generation and they're like the superheroes. There's one superhero that I kind of really relate to. It's fictional. I understand that. Do you know who I like? Superman. Do you know why I like Superman? Because he came from another place. Came down and he was technically a superhero to mankind. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? We are in this world, but not of this world. So when I look at myself, I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's the metaphor I'm trying to say to you. I am here, but I don't live here. Oh, come on, church. I am here, but I don't live here. But a lot of us, we're trying to make this our place to live. And God is coming again, and he's trying to say to you, fix up, Glenn. This ain't yours. I don't want you to be here. I just want you to follow my commandments. Help bring a few more with you. Preach my word. And let's go to where we really live. Why do you want a tent when you have a mansion? Why do you want a tent when you have a mansion, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, my family, I'm a messenger of the Lord. But I'm also a son, a husband, and an uncle. I am susceptible to all temptations. Just like sin, like everybody else. This is why we need Jesus daily in our lives. We can never look back. Tyler, I'll have the treadmill now, please. God laid this on my heart. Sophia, where are you at? Come down in. God laid this on my heart, and I hope you can get this visual representation of what I'm trying to explain right now. We are made to feel like we are on a treadmill. No, right here, please. Yeah? Right then, so all I need you to do is do that, yeah? Right then. If I drop, me sorry, yeah? <laughs> all right, hold well on, I'm coming. There we go, good, yeah? We are made to feel like we're on a treadmill, running faster and faster, yeah? Come with it, Tyler, yeah? We're made to feel like we have to keep up with the Joneses, yeah? New car, new house, new money. Yeah, have you noticed? All right, Tyler, you tried to kill me. <laughs> All right, here we go now, yeah? Keeping running up on a treadmill. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your, your life 
isn't about God. It's about, oh my gosh, so-and-so got a new yard. Yeah, what are we going to do? We need to fix up. We need to put extension on. We need to get this. We need to get that. And we're running. And we're running. And we're feeling like we're not achieving anything. Because our eye ain't on God. Our eye is looking at other people. All right. Come with it. Come with it. Too much, too much. You've gone up. Come on. Come on. No, no, you've gone too far now. Hold on. Right. Right then. So. Right, there you go. So we're trying to follow people. We're trying to follow people. We ain't trying to follow God. And God laid this on my heart heavy. And he was saying to me, but Glenn, when you were first saved, you was running. You were getting prayer meeting. Give it to me fast, Tyler. We were getting prayer meeting. I don't business. We were doing everything. We was going to church. We was preaching. We was out in the world. And we were doing everything for God. We were doing everything for God. Hallelujah. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? We were happy, weren't we? We was on the treadmill running for God. We were full of what? We were full of zeal. We was, a, we was powerful. We were feeling you. We were back to running again. Oh, Lord, I'm ready to go. I'm running for Christ. I'm running for Christ. I'm running. I'm running. But, slam down, please. For all of the running, for all of the running I'm doing, I start to slow down. After a while, I'm feeling like, sure. I don't even feel like going to church today. I don't even really want to go to church today. Have I got to stay on? Yeah? I don't even. You know what? Let me stay on and watch it on telly. Let me put on two worship songs and feel good inside. And I need to be in the body of Christ. Oh, I'm talking to someone today. You notice how I start to slow down now? I ain't getting prayer meeting. I ain't getting Bible study. I need to work on that, Lord, I know. <laughs> I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about you. <laughs> but I start to slow down. I don't even talk to Jesus in the car, but I'm buffing P. Diddy in the car, driving to work. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Can you slow this down even more? I'm starting to feel like, why? I ain't feel like it at all. I just come to church when I'm ready. Look at me now. Do I look like I'm running for Christ? Don't look like it, does it? So what am I doing? I'm just living. And guess who I'm living for? I'm living for me. I ain't living for God anymore. Where's that zeal gone? Where's that power? Where's that determination, church? How many times do you actually... I'm asking you to keep it 100 with me today. I'm asking you. How many times do you feel like the speed in your life has slowed down? Because of the outside world influences. What you have to what you don't have. What you got to what you don't got. Comparison. When you compare yourself to others. Oh, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Come on, church. Okay, hit me with a little bit more, Tyler. Running in the same place. God laid this heavily on my heart. I want you to get it today because I know you want to go. Hear this now. What am I doing right now? I'm walking, aren't I? Can you see me walking? Can you see me running? This is our life. Tomorrow you've got work, children got school, you've got jobs to go to, or if you're not, you're retired, yeah? And this is your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, then Sunday, church. Most people feel like their week is the same every week. And this is what the enemy is trying to make you feel like, that you're not doing anything in your Christian walkway, that you're nothing. Your life is the same walking. straight down, please. But here's the thing. When you're on the treadmill and you feel like you haven't got God at the center of your life, have I gone anywhere? On a treadmill, you're running in place. I'm not even going anywhere. How many people in their Christian walkway feel like they're not going anywhere? Oh, come on, church. Every week feels the same and the same and the same and the same. And the enemy will say, well, you know what? I don't see. I don't get it. That church is dead, man. Go to another one. Find something else. Try to bring disharmony and discord. We have to be mindful, church. 
We have to be mindful. Thank you, Tyler. Let me take that back. Lot and his family had specific instructions to leave the city of Sodom. And they said, don't look back. Yet they escaped. The word said, by the time Lot reached Zor, a little town outside, the sun had risen over the land, and the Lord rained down burning sulfur. You see the picture up there, so that mimic? Yeah? The sulfur started coming down, and the people was running, and it was too late. God destroyed the place. You see, the enemy wants to keep you longing for things. Here comes a part that I understand well. I said I'm going to give it to you straight, no trace, and here it comes. The enemy wants you longing for things of the past to keep your mind longing. The enemy wants to make you feel like you're in an endless treadmill with nowhere to go. That's your Christian walk is fruitless and empty. Why live in moderation, Glenn? Why give to others that they, what they, when they're in need? Why try to help the community? Why don't you just live for you? Do what feels good to you. Your friends are going out clubbing. Why don't you go? Nobody there knows you. Why not? You see what I'm trying to say? That's how the enemy's working. Compromise is the word I'm asking you to take home with you. When I start compromising, when you start compromising, I'm going to be like, look, I don't really want to go. You understand what compromise does? It dilutes you to the degree that you don't want to do anything. That everything is all right. This sinner isn't that bad, is it? It isn't that bad, really. If you want me to be honest and transparent, I do have these feelings. I do feel sometimes I feel unappreciated. I do feel like, am I making a difference? You know when you're trying to do things to help people and you don't feel like, not even a thanks? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I do feel, are we really helping the community? Are we really? And then God gives me one box like, fix up. Fix up. This ain't about you, Glenn. This is about the souls that are being saved. And I will save them in my time, not your time. So we can't go on hope. We can't go on emotion. We can't go on how we feel, which is really, really difficult. Because how we feel, it controls what we're like. The society we live in now, really, really makes you sometimes feel that you are on a treadmill and that you just want to long for what you had before. If you look at that picture there, if you think about Lot's wife, the word was specific, specific. Don't look back. That's the word for today. Church, I'm going to ask you one thing. I ain't going to say it more than one or two times, but I needed to say it loud. Don't look back. One time. One more time. That's all she had to do. That's all she had to do. That's not really hard, is it? No. Tyler, come here, please. Just leave the phone. Just come. So the angels, just stand there for me, please, and, and face me. So the angels said, you need to go and go fast. He doesn't know I'm going to do this. But in the Bible, the word says, the angels, I'm going to paraphrase, catch so vexed with them, they grab Lot and his family by the hand, forcibly and say, come. He said, come on, come on and come. Stop the coming on to pull. You can go. He said, come on. He said, come. You understand? You can go, son. You can go. The angels had to grip Lot's family and said, Majamad. You don't see, say, hellfire and brimstones coming down. And you slow walking. Stop it. Stop the coming on, come. Okay, that means stop dawdling. And come on. The angels, the word says the angels took them by the hand and said, come on, let's go. Because the angels were trying to be obedient. Lot wasn't trying to be obedient. He was trying to barter his way out of a situation that he didn't really want to leave him. He wasn't sure. Even down to his two son-in-laws. The son-in-laws turned around and said, Lot said to them, hey, the place is going to be destroyed. Do you know what they did? They laughed. <laughs> what do you mean? 
You mean Bill Simpson's going to get burned down today with fire and brimstone? Nah, mate, we're not going anywhere. Nah, it's not going to happen. That's the reaction that we're giving off. So you kind of makes you wonder, hold on a minute, if this is the case, how comfortable am I in this sin? It's like warm water, isn't it, when you get in the bar? Mm, this is nice. Not ready to move. Nobody wanted to go. God said, don't look back. The enemy will pull on your heartstrings. This hit home to me. Lot's wife looked back, longing in her heart that the things she used to look for, the familiar. I want to say something to you. Lot's wife and Lot, they were running. They were running. They were running and it was starting to come down. And the angels were like saying, we got to go. We got to go. Don't look back. Don't look back. I'm just... And Lot's wife was just like thinking of all what she knew that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. All what she was comfortable with, acquainted with, knowing. And then she was just like... One moment, one moment of disobedience when God is telling you to do something and we don't do it. What was longing in our heart? What was it? I honestly don't believe she was just having one more look. It was the familiarity of what she knew. It was the familiarity of thinking, I am going to be going from something which I am unknowing of where we're going to go to what I already got. How far are we as Christians willing to give up what we know to reach out and get something new? One moment, one moment had her frozen by... And it was too late. It was too late. This kept on rolling around in my spirit. Why did I linger? Why did I want to stay? Why was I given a chance, a way out? But why didn't I listen? And more importantly, why did I look back? What is in our lives that make us look back? I'm coming down. What is in our lives that make us want to look back? That really had me thinking. God laid something on my heart. Gabby, can I borrow you real quick? Tyler, come up. Come, come behind me, just jump up on stage for me. This is our last ex- example. Gabby and Tyler are an example of Sodom. I am Lot's wife. And then everything that I remember that I'm familiar with, they are trying to remind me, lure me to look back. So what are you saying then, Gabby? What are you saying? Should I come back? Glenn. What? I can't hear you. What? Glenn. Tyler, I can't hear you. Glenn. What? Glenn. No, I'm going. Glenn. I'm going. Glenn. I'm going. What? What? Glenn. Should I? Should I? Glenn. I love you, but I'm keeping my... Glenn. Thank you. Your friends, your family, nobody. God's command was to keep going and not look back. Everybody's accountable to themselves. Lot and his family knew that, and she didn't follow through. I thought to myself, why would I linger knowing that everything that has happened, especially the night before with the men banging down the doors and the angels coming, why would I linger? I wouldn't even stay the night. God wants to deliver you out of your current situation. Whatever it is, big or small, God wants to deliver you in your current situation. You know, when I think about our lives, 
And this is where I'm going to leave it because I, I don't really need to say the last bit because I know. This is a problem with our generation. When the word goes forward, lad, it was good in It's good in me. Enjoy that. Like we're watching telly. But when it comes down to the physical action of making a change, oh, come on, church. We won't move from the pew to the altar. You know why? Because it's like an entertainment. Church was good in it. That pastor Roger preached fire. That pastor and the family preached fire. Me and Jay. But you know in your heart you need deliverance. So you know in your heart you need praying for. And you come in as a dry sinner and still leave as a dry sinner. When the water is troubled. Every single week. We all need prayer. Am I talking to someone today? That when the word convicts you, this is what I sometimes say to myself, you've got to do better, Glenn. Get up and run. I have to do better. Come on, church. That when the word is, you know what it is? And I wrote it down and I was like, should I say that? And I was talking to God, you know, saying, and he said, write it as I, t- say it as I told you. Say it as I told you. So I'm going to say it as I tell you. This is the reason why sometimes we don't have the altar full. Because the natural man kicks in and says, whoa, the world is too powerful there, you know. It was talking about morality. It's talking about sexual sin. It's talking about this. And I don't want anyone else to make me feel like I've done something wrong. You know, conviction. Am I making sense? So even though we're all trying to get to heaven, nobody wants to feel judged. I tell you today, church, do not bother who's to the left or to the right of you. Your salvation is your salvation. Hallelujah. Your salvation is your salvation. I want to make it into heaven. I would like my two children and my wife and family to make it into heaven. But as much as I want them to, I can't neck lock them into, come on. But when the word touches your heart, Meet me at the brook. Meet me at the troubled waters. The Bible says there was a man who was like lame and the, um, the disciples was walking through the town and he heard that Jesus was passing. Hallelujah. And everyone was like, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And the man was like, oh man, oh man, I can't move. I'm lying in my bed. I can't move. What am I going to do? I'm going to miss out. Jesus is coming and I'm missing out. You know what happens? The disciples heard. What? So his servants come and pick up the man, pull him through a roof, carried him out and said, here he is. Please, Jesus, can you make it happen? Can you? Are you willing, able-bodied people, how far are you willing to go to get your blessing? Sodom's wife, sorry, <laughs> Lot's wife, she looked back because she was longing for things behind her. There are times that we are all longing for things. But what we've got to remember is that we need to keep our eye on God. No matter what. And when friends, family, loved ones is telling you to look back and hearken back to them days, you keep your eye where? In front of you. Don't look back, church. Don't look back. These are my few words in Jesus' precious name. There is one thing I am going to say to everyone. Brother Mark, can you help us move this, please? And brother, um, my son Tyler. There is one thing I am going to say. I felt convicted when I was writing this word. That I need to stop being in a lukewarm bath water. I need to do better. I need to be the person that I know I can be. Are you understanding me, church? Because I wrote it in a way and then I felt like, is this the right way to say it? Because I'm trying to say to you, we all have our own little Sodom and Gomorrahs in our life. Meaning, we all have our own little things that we hearken back to. I remember when, you are right there? I remember, boy, I wrote this down and I was looking at it and I was like, mm. 
I remember when I was younger, I had the nice house. I still do. Nice car, nice family, nice this, nice that. Guess what I even had? Guess what I even had? I had nice hair. <laughs> I had nice hair. I had the high top, the Bobby Brown. I had it all. I had it back then. If you know, you know when you're growing up. I went back home to see my family, my sisters, and we went through this photo album. And I didn't get a chance to put it up today for one reason or another. And I looked up what I looked back, and I was doing exactly that. I was looking back. And it was reminding me how far God has brought me. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? You're talking from a young black boy from South London. Family, church family. Never really thought I was going to be in church as long as I have. And I thank God that I am still saved and sanctified and preaching his word. This ain't to promote me, but I know where I've come from. And I know the ends where I come from. Many of my friends ain't even going to church now. Many of my friends that I know, they're doing their own thing. But I thought back and I was like, look at how you looked when you was younger. Boy, are you sweetie? <laughs> and then I thought to myself, the more you look back is just a reminder, but that's not who you are now. Who I am is a different person. I am a new creature. I am chosen, called out. I'm a peculiar person called for God. When you look in the mirror and things start getting hard for you, I'm going to ask you to remind and think to yourself, yeah, I was different back then, but I'm so glad of who God has made me right now. You understand what I'm saying, church? So when the enemy wants to say to you, boy, things are going bad for you, man. Boy, I don't know how you're going to make it. Just say, God is my helper. God is my helper. And I don't have to look back to what I once had because he is a provider of all that I need. So if anybody needs prayer today, I'm going to ask you to come to the brook because the water is troubled. If anybody needs prayer, it doesn't have to be prayer about today. It could be about anything. But if you feel that God can make your life better after you leave this place, this is where you should be. So I don't know if you've got any musicians. Everybody gone. I'm just asking you, music or no music, I'm asking you, come to the brook. And we're all going to pray. It ain't going to be like me praying on you. We're all going to pray um, collectively. Asking God to change our heart. Hallelujah. Asking God that when we leave here, no more Sodom, no more looking back to where we once was. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So many things you have been through, yet you are still standing Brother Nathaniel, I'm going to ask you to come up with me, please. How great is our God? He is the great I am. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for these people who have come here this morning. Lord, you know their circumstances. But we're asking you right now this morning, Lord Jesus, that they've come asking for a special touch. I don't, we don't need to know what it is. But we're asking you, Heavenly Father, that you touch them one more time. That they feel like they don't have to be on a treadmill. Hallelujah. Touch them, Lord. That when they leave here, they know they can look to you and never look back. And never look back. And never look back. Yes. Lord, this church is filled. Everyone has their own calling, Lord. Their own needs. But we're asking you, Lord, to hear each and every one of their prayers. Whatever they may be going through, Lord. Touch them, Lord, where they stand. But I say to you right now, church, all you've got to do is believe. Believe in faith and it shall be done. The centurion said, all you have to do is say the word, hallelujah, and my servant will be healed. Say the word. Say the word that, Lord, I need you in my life. I don't want to look back no more. I don't want to be lukewarm no more. And it shall be so. 
but you've got to believe. Believe like that centurion soldier. Just say the word, oh Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, there are people that look to these celebrities, look to the outside world and think this is it. Lord, refocus their heart and their mind that they'll come to know that you are the King of Kings and that you are the Lord of Lords. And only you, oh Lord, give life and death. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray, oh God, oh God, that hearts will be changed this morning. And it's not for anyone else, but for your individual self. That I am changed and made whole. All you've got to do is believe and take the step. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's come today. Lord, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. One more time, dear Lord. Make me whole. I've been lukewarm like the word says. I've been lukewarm. But I'm asking you, Lord, to change me. Get me running again, oh God. Filled with zeal. Get me running again. Preaching your word. Get me running again. Speaking of the gospel. Get me running again. Telling people of the good news. Because you are the good news, oh God, that you are coming again. You are coming again. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. Not for self, oh Lord. I decrease that you may increase. Lord, may our generation be slain, oh God, that self will be slain and that you will rise up. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done this morning. We thank you for your people that have been receptive to the word. We thank you for your people to have listened and to take it on board. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to be lukewarm, Lord. I don't want to look back, Lord. Grab me by the hand if need be. Grab me by the hand, Lord. Because I want to make it in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. up here and let everything look so glamorous. Glenn, speak it as it is. So we're going to cover him with prayers. And we're going to decree that no weapon formed against him will prosper. In Jesus' holy name. Father, thank you for your man servant. Thank you, Father, for the works that you have done in his life. The works you are going to do. God, we surround him and we surround his family. Hallelujah. And we decree and declare that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that all the angels, oh God, will assign to him, oh God. That, Father, that you will keep him in perfect peace as he set his mind upon you. Father, you have begun a work in Glenn's life. And Father, we trust and know that you are more than able Hallelujah. to complete. Hallelujah. So God, we pray that you fill him up afresh. Father, keep him. Keep him under the shadow of your holy mighty wings. Father, help him to stand 
in that place where you love him to be. And Father, as he desire more of you, O oh God, we ask that you pour out. Pour out, O oh God, that there will be an overflow in his life. That those around him, O oh God, will be touched by his presence. Father, let his mouth be sharp with the words that you are placing his on. And Father, let Glenn speak a thing. Let him decree a thing. And it shall be so. God be with him. Be his guide. Be the lifter of his head. Throughout this week, oh God, we pray that all the ghost fire will surround him. Wherever he goes, oh God, we set a fire guard around him. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we praise you for his life. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Well done. 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 Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Okay, then for the notices for this week, are as follows. Monday, there'll be fasting on Monday at home from 6 a.m. to 1 and between 12 and 1 in church. Tuesday, there'll be prayer meeting on Zoom at 7.30 p.m. And I believe the dialing details remain the same. Is this correct? Yes. Yeah. Uh, also on Tuesday, there'll be parent and toddler group. And there'll also be, sorry, I do apologise. And there'll also be food bank between 12 and 2 p.m. Wednesdays, there's no events. Thursday, there'll be no more gospel Zumba until further notice. And on Friday, it will be Hope House Ministry uh, at 10.30 till 2. And Brother Maxwell, Reverend Maxwell um, is requesting volunteers because they're always welcome. Saturday, there's a new Converts Bible class which starts on the 30th of November at 9.30. Uh, can you please see Brother Gerald or Sister Winnie Maxwell if you'd like some more information? It's a really interesting class actually because I've done it and it was really, really interesting. I can only say I learned so much from attending each week. It was really amazing. Uh, Right, okay, and then Sunday we have Sunday school 10 to 11. Okay, next we have additional dates for your diary. So next Sunday we are going to be having a baptism service. Woohoo! If anyone is interested in, in becoming uh, baptized, please see Reverend Maxwell or Pastor, please. Saturday, the 23rd of November, there will be a, another woohoo. <laughs> part two of my brother's keeper gospel fundraising concert and this is going to be in aid of the homeless and also for local community initiatives tickets are 15 pounds or 20 pounds on the door and if you'd like any further information and also your tickets please see sister ivy Lou. Wednesday, the 27th of November, set at 7.30, will be our last women's meeting for the year. On this night, we would like to have, well, the meeting's entitled, Learn From Each Other. As the Bible tells us, as older women, and we will always teach the young, and we know how, well, we know to share support and give guidance. We can also take on advice from young people also. Right, Sister Mel is, she'd like you to bring two pieces of advice the first piece of advice is something that you believe will help in our everyday life. And the second piece of advice is something uh, that you can share that would assist also from a, from a Christian perspective in a Christian walk. Uh, it could be anything at all. So it could be study tips, interview techniques, help with the children, devotional ideas, etc. So just please have a think about it. Also, on that night, we'd also like to do a secret gift exchange where we buy a gift for £5, wrap it up and swap it on the night. The gifts will be collected in or on the evening and be given to Sister Hazel, who sits in the front row I've got here. 
Thank you. <laughs> and um, even if you have never been to a women's meeting before, it would be so nice to see as many of you uh, at that event. Thank you. Then we have uh, Saturday the 30th of November. After five years, the Youth Takeover concert is back. Get ready for the ultimate youth praise party. An event you don't want to miss. It's going to be praise and worship on a powerful night with excitement like you've never had before. Ooh. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Okay, uh, where was I? Right, bring your energy and bring your friends. Um, and the good thing is, this is actually free, not a penny, not a red cent. You get nothing for free in today's life. Well, some things you do, but this is going to be a free concert. The only thing that we're asking you for is just a donation or a, a, um, a collection on the night. Uh, Friday, the 20th of December, this is going to be the last week, so can you just have a bit of effort, please, everyone? Are you all half asleep? Come on. Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, then, Friday, the 20th of December, we have our second Tab Affair. And it's going to be a black tie event and a three course meal and an awards event on the night. Uh, if you want to, if you're interested in attending, please see Sister Ivy Lou or Sister Colleen. And the cost is £35 a ticket per person until the 30th of November. And after that, the, the prices do change slightly. Okay? And that's all for me today. God is good all the time. Amen. Thank you all.